Hey everybody, I'm JJ. You're watching Reality Survival. <clears throat> so, the Israeli-Iran war <laughs> is apparently on in full steam. Um, obviously, Iran has been attacking Israel through proxies, Hamas and Hezbollah, for years. Iran's, you know, has responded. This has been a tit-for-tat for a long time, but it's mostly been through proxies. So then uh, Israel finds out that uh, one of the one of the Iranian or one of the I don't remember if it's Hezbollah or Hamas commanders is in an, in in a uh, embassy of Iran's and they attack that. So then Israel responds just the other day with 350 missiles and drones, mostly ineffective debating whether or not some got through or not. There's, you know, conflicting stories. And now Israel is planning their response, uh, which is to, to happen here shortly. So you have a, you have a, a, a direct attack from Iran on Israel now. It's not, it's no longer through a proxy and Israel is going to respond. We don't know exactly what their target will be, but it's assumed that it will be within the geographic borders of Iran as well. Um, this is this is about to go wide. <laughs> like, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know under what scenario that this is this is not going to. Uh, turn into a much wider conflict. Um, and that's not good for the world. That's not good for Israel or Iran or the U.S. or anybody. And it's, it's difficult to say exactly where the United States support is going to be on this because the administration typically speaks out of both sides of their mouth. They say, oh, our support for Iran or for Israel, excuse me, is... Uh, ironclad, but yet, you know, you're funding uh, Iran, Iran, and and um, then we we get uh, a lot of pushback on, you know, hampering the, their military operations. So, I'm not sure that anybody can say for sure exactly where the U.S. is going to fall fall in on this thing, exactly, um, on the traditional side of the camp, you might say, well, Israel is a close ally, and so of course we're going to support them. Although there's been a very strong, uh, you know, desire to, to withdraw from this Middle Eastern conflict, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure that we will. I don't know. Um, I think it could go either way. I think it's, it's kind of a coin toss on where we're going to land on this, on, to be honest with you. At least until there's an administration change. Um, the current administration, I just, I'm just not sure that, that we really have enough good information on what their stance is to be able to make a determination one way or another. So, that's, that's interesting. Um, I would say to you that it's time to buckle up. <laughs> like, like we're we're getting we're getting close to where this is. This could could all really go sideways. Uh, you've got um, in Ukraine, you've got NATO now. More NATO members saying that they're going to provide F-16s. I think it was the Netherlands, and they're also encouraging uh, attacks within deep within. Uh, Russia with those. Um, Russia is not going to tolerate that and they have said uh, pretty openly that where even wherever the, the F if F-16s are used in the conflict, wherever they're based or housed will be considered legitimate targets, even if it's in NATO countries. So hard to say exactly how that's going to go. Are they going to place these F-16s uh, in Ukraine and risk them being bombed and, and destroyed, or are they going to fly them from another country? 
if they fly in from another country and it's a NATO country, then of course that's going to, um, that's going to cause a lot of conflict as well. So it's not looking good. It's, it's not looking good at all. Um, I hope that we can figure out a way or that the uh, geniuses that are in office can figure out a way how to keep this from moving to a, to a wider conflict. But I'll be honest, it's, it, it, they're, they're getting deeper. They're getting pulled deeper and deeper into this thing. And, uh, I'm not sure that we're going to be able to avoid You know a wider uh, a wider conflict so what does that mean for you well mostly it means that you need to just be prepared you know just like we always we always talk about um, making sure that you've got your food water security first aid medical um, power generation you know I mean the every every escalation that we have that this just in, in increases the chance that there could be some sort of a nuclear exchange or something along those lines um i mean some people have speculated that iran already has a bomb i'm not sure that i've i've seen anything to to support that but we know that russia does for sure um now not all of their bombs will probably come out of the hole, <laughs> you know, probably only about 10% of them will go off, but that still leaves, you know, of the active missiles, that still leaves a good 150 or so that'll, that'll make it through, um, that'll actually, you know, work. Um, if there was an exchange, that's, that's a lot, right? That's, that's difficult to deal with. Um, so I don't know. Uh, this, this is, this is definitely, shaky times so if you've if you've been holding off on uh, making some preparedness purchases and stuff like that i would go ahead and do it uh, if you've got the money i still don't think it's wise to be going into debt and stuff like that for it but you know there's a you should you should be taking steps to to be able to know where you're going to shelter in place if you need to you know what what are you going to do if if all of a sudden there's actually, you know, raid sirens going off in the United States. I mean, I don't, I really don't think that that's super high likelihood. I don't want to think that. But when I'm looking at all these developing cir circumstances, you can't, you, you know, you have to, you have to blatant, you have to like intentionally ignore some of these things to say that it's not a possibility. Right, and I don't really know what the level of possibility is. It's kind of ridiculous to, to make that assessment. I mean, it's it's ultimately down to the personalities involved in this whole thing right now. This is what it comes down to, whether or not they want to, you know, what they want to do. Um, so where where are you going to shelter in place? Do you have uh, do you have that location identified? Maybe it's your basement. Maybe it's a, a commercial building close to you. Maybe it's you know because some people don't have basements where they live. And that sucks, but unless you're going to build some sort of shelter within your house, then you're going to have to go to another location because sheltering in your house is not a good option. Now, if it's the only thing that you can do, then it's the only thing you can do, right? Um, I've got a whole playlist on nuclear, uh, nuclear war survival skills. You can take a look at that. Um, I've got a list of all the affiliates of the different prepping companies that I, you know, that I work with and all that down below. And they've all got discount codes associated with them. So you can save some money on, on all that kind of stuff. Um, in regards to the context of this conversation, EMP shield might be one you want to think about, especially for your vehicles, because if something happens while you're at work and you want to try to be able to try to get home, then it's, I think it's a good idea to have an EMP shield on your vehicle so that you can at least make the effort, right? It, there's going to be some road blockage. It's going to be, you know, difficult probably because of traffic and all that kind of stuff. But all these 
All these circumstances just depend on where you are in relation to where a bomb would go off and all this. There's a lot of variables. So to me, playing those odds, I think it's a good idea to give yourself every advantage as possible that you can get home to your kids, get your kids out of school, get to your shelter location, you know, whatever the case may be. Now, obviously, if you're too close, you're going to get destroyed in the in the blast, right? And then it doesn't matter. I'm talking about all those people that are on those edges and that fringe and that in that you know area that is maybe just outside of you know the uh, total destruction area, um, and that's that's going to be a lot of people because those zones you know if major cities are targeted those zones are out where a lot of businesses and and homes and all that kind of stuff are. There's a lot of population out in that those areas so. Um, there's also uh, something to think about with regard to this is the uh, gas masks, the fires and the particulate that's in the air and all that kind of stuff is going to be significant. And it's going to be um, if there if there were an attack, a nuclear attack, those people that are in those fringe zones, there's going to be a lot of fires, there's going to be a lot of smoke, a lot of debris and having a gas mask with you. Uh, in your vehicle and at your home with some extra filters would be pretty smart. And again, there's a affiliate link down in the description below from Mira Safety. As far as I know, they make the best gas masks um, on the market. And up to this point, I haven't been carrying one in my vehicle, but I'm thinking about putting one in there, I'm gonna be honest, um, because we're just, we're just in this no man's land where anything could literally happen at any point. And so we need to be as prepared as we can for whatever pops up. So anyway, guys, I hope this is useful to you. Um, let me know where you think we're at on this. Do you think that uh, World War III is already going full on? Do you think that uh, it's still going to be avoided for a while? I really don't know. All I know is, is that we're in that, we're in that like, tiptoey gray area where it could just go either way um and it could it could turn sideways really really quickly at this point i think so we just need to be ready that's all we got to do all right guys don't forget to live the six p's proper prior preparation prevents poor performance stay safe